for at least the last two years, I've been in search of a certain professional individual to do certain professional things for my business. I won't go into much more detail about that role. For the last two years, I've been unable to find such individual. And the one reason that this has happened is because every time I reach out to a potential person, they are horrible at communicating or they're completely incompetent in some other way. I just had a conversation with one of them. They told me that they couldn't get back to me for 12 days because they were busy. I immediately stopped responding to them and started looking elsewhere. Why? Because I don't care who you are or what you do. If you run your own company doing a certain service and you can't get back to a potential client for 12 days, I'm not interested in working with you. This video is all about excuses and how to not make them and why it is so important in any professional job to not ever make excuses. Let's go over the most common form of excuses, whether it's, hey, sorry, I'm responding to your email late, or I'm sorry, but this thing I've been working on or doing for you isn't done yet, blah, 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 blah. The bottom line is in life, you can't make excuses for every time you don't do your job right. There's a point in anyone's career where they start to realize you just can't make those excuses after a certain point, whether you've been working out of college or even with a professor. Most of the time, the excuse doesn't really do anything but make you look like you aren't able to do your job. I used to do this a lot when I first started freelancing. I would say, hey, I'm so sorry, I've been ill or something's gone on and I'm not gonna be able to do X, Y, and Z. I've really tried to filter that out to basically only account for, hey, I'm so sorry, I can't do X, Y, and Z, I can't meet tomorrow because my dog is in the hospital or my grandparent just died. I mean, I know that sounds bad, but I try to limit the excused time for X, Y, and Z to very serious, almost emergency level things. Even when I get sick, sometimes I don't even try to tell my client because I don't want them to think that I'm unable to do my job or to make it seem like an excuse. If I can hit my deadline while being sick and taking a day off, I'll do it. If the client sees you getting the job done and delivering on time, they don't really care how you get there most of the time. If you're sick or what have you, you don't have to go tell the client, hey, I'm sick, just FYI. They don't care. They just wanna make sure you're hitting their deadlines and meeting their needs. This form of excuses can really snowball quickly and ultimately cost you clients. You start taking excused time off for, you know, things you might need. And then you start being like, uh, I don't want to work today. And then you find more and more and more excuses. And then all of a sudden you're super behind, your client thinks you're incompetent, and they most likely will move on from you. So that's excuses on the back end, whether it's, you know, on the back end of your workflow or the back end of what you're doing. On the front end is when a client challenges something that you send over. A lot of times when I first started freelancing, I would let clients kind of talk me out of my own work, whether they would question something or provide a alternative look at things and I would let them talk me out of what I did. This is really bad, and it ultimately will undermine the relationship you have with the client. You need the client to believe in you, and you need them to trust that you have the right opinion for a given solution. Instead of going, oh, well, this is why I did this, it might not be right, or you get kind of defensive, but also you become sort of weak. The flip side to that is don't make an excuse. Don't say, oh yeah, you're right, I messed up, when you didn't. There's times where I do mess up in my work where I do need to apologize for making a mistake. But if a client tries to make something I did look like a mistake and it's not, I always try to check them on that and respond in a way that sounds confident and a little bit in charge of the project from an aesthetic standpoint. That's what I've been hired to do. So if I give up my right to give advice there, there's no point in me working for that client because ultimately I'm just becoming somebody that enacts their ideas and doesn't have any good ideas to bring to the table. This can be really detrimental to a client freelancer relationship because you're ultimately in charge of the design when you hand it off. You've taken their ideas and you've made them reality. So that's the front end of excuses. You have to remember that all of these tactics have to be done with tact. That means you have to understand your client well enough to know when to push 
or when to give up. Ultimately, the client is almost always right. Sometimes they're wrong and you have to choose those battles accordingly. So if you can take one thing away from this video, I don't really care at all what it is other than the fact I don't want anyone that's working with me to give excuses for why they didn't do their job. If they made a mistake, I want them to tell me. And as a result, I never wanna give a client an excuse for why I didn't do my job. If you work by this principle, you will keep and retain clients for a really long time, and you will also learn from these mistakes and grow from them. If you excuse every mistake that you make, you're ultimately undermining the value of that learning experience. You're not able to see why you did what you did and what you did wrong because you've already told yourself and the client that it's not your fault. Learn from your mistakes, don't make excuses, and stand by your work. <laughs>